Audrey Johnson on the Audrey Johnson Show. What a privilege to be here to watch a Charles beautiful painting. But I'm gonna I'm standing here with Mary McGuire, who is um, his better half, and she's gonna explain this beautiful. Look at this. This is gorgeous. Can you share with yeah, me? Yeah, absolutely. All the world? Uh, basically, this is a very like a big turning point in his work, where he's very he's very well known for his photorealism, um, such as the candy work, oh, and <laughs> this is a big change because he's working in um, uh, in gold, in 24 karat gold. The price of the painting is keyed to the price of gold. So as gold goes up, so does the painting. As it goes down, the price of this painting goes down. He was inspired by the Incas that communicated from mountain to mountain with gold plates. So they would sort of send these pulsars of information from one mountain to another to communicate with each other. So this is the cosmos of uh, the heavens, and there's information in a relief inside all of these, almost like a language, like a secret language. This is the story of this painting, and there's quite a lot of texture to it. Um, these are drops of uh, pure silver that he drops down, he waits for them to, to really harden. It takes about two days mixes it with a compound and it's um, 24 karat gold so um, it's it's a beautiful piece it's something very new for him and it's a it's a story that's going to be ongoing now this is the first of many so probably the in one year from now the next show will have a tremendous amount of these gold works it'll be like jewelry really it is jewelry. and it's called the wave of gold and it's really about time for a lot of gold in abundance, giving gold in abundance to the world and to, um, you know, the people that get to have this beautiful piece on their wall. It is one of a kind. This will never be reproduced. This is a more typical piece of Charles, what he's been known for the past uh, several years. A lot of collectors collect his realism. So this is a more traditional, more typical Wild Bank um, trademark look of his realism. And he dreams quite a lot. This one he calls a peppermint undertow. Wow, when does he come up with these ideas? And how does the idea come? Does he dream it? It comes to him in a dream? Yeah, he dreams and in the morning we have, um, he has a ritual that we share called um, glistening. Listening. Listening is listening to our bliss. So he just wakes up and starts to ramble on about his dreams, about like what he was dreaming, and then um, listens to me about what I've been dreaming. And um, we start our day with our dreams, like just latching onto our dream, acknowledging the dream that we have. And, uh, and our day goes from our dreams. We just dream our life. That is so <laughs> this is the most romantic thing I've heard. And you've been like this all the time that you, you get up and you dream and you bliss your dream. Every day. Every day. And often we do it right at the ocean because we live near the water. So we wake up, we start listening, and then we continue and go to the water and we sit on the water and um, continue to listen. We do it at the beginning of the day and then at the end of the day because the whole middle of the day is just work, work, work. We work all the time and because we so love to work and um, he paints all the time, S never stops painting. So we have a, a ritual where we begin the day and we end the day in a blissen, face to face. You know, because he's deaf, we have to talk like this. Uh, he has to look at my mouth. So it's very nice because we're so um, connected, you know. Mary, Mary, I think you're speaking to us because, and not just us, but the world. Because you said, keep it simple, keep it real. You work all the time. You spend each time here, here, here's your partner is um, deaf. So you have to be patient because you want to get your things out, but you've learned patience and he's learned patience because he has to read your lips. So communication is the key to love. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, it's communication and it's taking time to, uh, taking time to see each other, to hear each other. 
And just to know that all the work that we do to acknowledge that we're living in a world of service, that we're here to be of service, and that we love to be of service. So in this painting, Charles says, Hiking is one of my frequent and favorite outdoor activities, particularly steep cliffs by desert or by sea. Shown in this painting are the cathedral rocks of Sedona in its blazing glory, further intensified by the prismatic lens effect of a crystal pyramid. Pyramid and mountain are one geometry, both in with the base at the bottom and the peak at the top. Colors are diffracted into pointillistic strokes, giving it a chimeric effect. It is my intention to offer a fresh view of that intensely personal but fleeting experience. That's a lot. Charles Wildbank. Charles. Charles, you are an amazing man. <laughs> He's gifted. Charles is gifted. You, both of you are blessed and charming. Thank you. Jesse provided the sushi. I love sushi. And I want you to get a taste to find out about Jesse and his restaurant, which is local, right? Yes, we are located in uh, Sag Harbor. Uh, we've been around for about 18 years now, family run restaurant. Uh, we have a Japanese restaurant with uh, sushi. Uh, we also have Pao, which is our sister restaurant right next door, which is our modern Thai restaurant, modern Asian, Thai inspired, um, as well as we are opening up in the city, hopefully within the fiscal year, uh, to have another Sen. Uh, in Manhattan, so oh, in Manhattan, um, yes. Wow, wow. Yes. So you've actually been here in the Hamptons for 18 years. Is that what I heard? Years, 18 How? years. Yes. Wow, that's a long time. You were just a baby. I was just a baby. Yes, my father started the restaurant 18 years ago. Okay. My brother and I run the restaurant right now. So right now, you and your brother run the restaurant. So tell us, um, do you do the cooking, or are you more of the communicating with all of the customers and everybody else? What do I, you do? I started off in the back of the house. I started off as a dishwasher working my way up through the, the sushi bar, working through there, working into the kitchen, and then uh, I've been managing for about four, four to five years now, yes. That's awesome. Well, I tell you, I eat a lot of sushi. I'm from California. We eat a lot of high Californians. I'm in the Hamptons. We eat a lot of sushi. What is it about your sushi? Because it was very fresh. I had um, two pieces and it was really good. What was it? What is it? Well, what you had was our uh, tofu avocado sushi. Tonight, uh, we just had uh, vegan vegetarian sushi, uh, which was requested by the Lowell Group, which is absolutely fine. We have a, vari a, a wide variety of uh, vegan and vegetarian options um, on our menu. Um, but what's very nice about our restaurant in the Hamptons is that we are so close to the water that we get such fresh fish. Um, we get these amazing fishermen with these beautiful fish, let it be local fluke, striped bass, even tuna and all these other beautiful fish that is uh, broken down by our Japanese sushi chef uh, Kei Yoshino uh, who's been formally trained in Japan um, and it just comes out to a beautiful product and we get guests coming in every night time after time just raving about our sushi.